Tragic. <laughs> Tragic, I know. Joss Whedon was not permitted to travel after a, some kind of knee thing. I told him, have them removed. But will he listen? No. So here we are, you guys. Uh, with, without Joss, what are we, really? <laughs> I'm a hobo. But what I tried to do, the, 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 the gang looked at me and said, hey, uh, so Joss canceled. What can you do? I said, here's what I can do. I can gather up some friends of mine. <laughs> Starting with a fella, this is our three year anniversary of being friends. Our first, we first met on a panel, uh, TV Guide Fan Favorites, and right afterwards, we proceeded to sit in every Batmobile they had out in front of uh, the... Please welcome Mr. Liam McIntyre. That's you right there. Perfect. Li nicely done. You have been working out. Oh, stop. Spartacus is not just the name of my cat. It's a show. <laughs> <laughs> oh right. Yeah, it's... Never mind. My cat's dead. So that's okay. <laughs> that's I'm I'm used I crushed to it. it. Next up, uh, very lovely lady. I uh, watched this girl on the television program. <laughs> Marvel Agents of Shield. <laughs> Please welcome the lovely and talented Chloe Bennett. <laughs> Chloe, Thanks. thank you for adding girl power to our panel. Yeah. Nathan cornered me and was like, you're doing this. I said, all right. Hey, guys. In the right lighting, I can be intimidating. Uh, next up, this guy uh, has employed perhaps even more people than Joss Whedon through shows like Robot Chicken. Please welcome Seth Green. Wow. Welcome to the Nathan Fillion high-pressured friend panel. <laughs> you owe me, Seth. You owe me. I, and I will pay in full. <laughs> Everybody loves Nathan. It's really, it's hard to resist him. And he was like, dude, do you want to jump on a gangbang panel? And I was like... What is this? What now? <laughs> <laughs> 
what are you talking about? He goes, oh, bad, bad choice of words. <laughs> Next up. What? <laughs> you know him by many names. I know him as my panel crutch because my panels always go better when he's around. Let, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Alan Tudyk. <laughs> oh. What a showman. <laughs> oh. I hate him already. That is so much fun. <laughs> Wait, no, no, we should start this panel, but first, let me just take a selfie. I'll, t I'll tag you guys. <laughs> so, first of all, thank you, everybody, for coming to do this last minute, because all of you had the same kind of reaction. When I said <laughs> it to you, you kind of went, what? <laughs> Not uh, an easy job, I think, to uh, replace Joss. Uh, yeah, I know. No, Thanks yeah. a lot. Yeah. 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 Oh, I thought, how, wait. I thought how we were just subbing. We. Yeah. That's true. We all have a connection to Joss, actually. Uh, Alan. I mow his lawns. <laughs> Seth. I make sure his nails are beautiful and cut. <laughs> Chloe. I'm half Chinese, so I do his laundry. <laughs> I can say that. I'm Chinese. It's funny when I say <laughs> that. I am Chinese. I know I look Hispanic, but it's, it's true. It's okay. And I polish his forehead. <laughs> what did um, you say? I polish his forehead. Someone has to. Oh, I thought you said you manscaped him. Can it be both? <laughs> Same thing. Do a little yeah. something. Hey, that's Same between thing. me and him. So when you have a question at a Joss Whedon panel, perhaps it's even better to ask us. <laughs> <laughs> Liam, I first met you at, at another panel. We, uh, did, we sat in all the Batmobiles. I met you in a Batmobile. That's right. That's about as good as it gets. Yeah. I got a little, I'm not gonna, those things are made for little people. I was like, get me out. <laughs> yeah. No, I know. Before, I found and it we were both in it at the same time. I was so trying to be, I was trying to act cool. I love you too. <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to die. Oh. Chloe, where did I first meet you? I think it was at Joss's house. That's right. Actually, uh, Joss had a big party. Yeah. And there was a jumpy castle. Yeah. It might have been in the jumpy castle. I'm jumpy castle. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's funny. Um, I had I had only uh, like a month or so prior uh, helped a friend audition for your role. Wow, I was thanks. running, all right, I didn't know you, and I was running lines. I, I didn't was get it. running lines with it at the time, and then I saw the... It's okay. You do a better job than I would have done. I admit it. It's true. I was, I was watching you, and I was like, wow, man, she's good. You're very good. Thanks. You're very good. Thank you. You're very impressive. Aww. Thank you. I don't know. Where do you get off? <laughs> Seth. Hi, hi, Nathan. Do you recall where we first met? I was trying to figure that out because it just feels like I've always known you. I've known you a long yeah. time. It's weird. Well, because we were doing, we were doing Buffy. It was like <laughs> it was a long time ago. It was uh, '98. Yeah, I want to say uh, um, James uh, j uh, just joined the show, and I kind of came to a party and saw you in passing, and I thought. God, who is that handsome devil? And then he moved, and there's me behind him. <laughs> Alan, where did we first meet? Ha-ha! <laughs> we first met in a little restaurant in New York City uh, on 70, 71st, 72nd, and Columbus, Columbus, and the upstairs section is a Mexican food restaurant called Harry's Burritos. And I was your waiter. <laughs> I'll never forget you looked at me and said, black beans? <laughs> it was black beans. It was black, black beans. beans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Alan, then the next time I met him was at a read-through for uh, Firefly, the, the, the pilot. We were reading through the pilot. And I was looking across the table going, that's... Uh, that's Alan Tudyk, the movie star. How, how did we get him? He's good. He's really good. 
And then we realized we knew uh, each other from Harry's Burritos. From Harry's Burritos. <laughs> when I went back to New York, he said, hey, if you want a good Mexican food restaurant, you should go to this place called Harry's Burritos. I said, I used to wait tables there. Wait a minute. <laughs> Did you date that? She was a soap opera actress, brunette, really pretty. Yep. Fuck, I remember you. And I do. I remembered him, because I hated him. Uh, because she was so beautiful, I had a crush on her. And then she brought this good-looking guy along. I was like, God, all those beautiful women date good-looking guys. God. But you were so nice. He couldn't hate you. <laughs> and I didn't spit in his food much. That's how nice you were. That's fair. You still don't spit in my food much. Does anyone have a microphone that has a question? We have, right over here, this is perfect, this is good. Yes, you have a question for Joss Whedon? Yeah, I do. <laughs> well, I did have a question for Joss, but seeing as he isn't here, um, I have to ask a question for my friend. She's somewhere in here. Uh, she lost her voice, so she texted me this. <laughs> yeah, we've been screaming a lot this week. <laughs> um, so. Where's my voice? <laughs> No, not good enough? Uh, funnier. All right. So this is not going to be a serious question. Sorry. We know there have been uh, rumors going around that you may or may not make an appearance down the road in the Marvel Universe. Me. Um, Nathan. Me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, she's already in. So. Yeah. Great job, by the way. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> nice jacket. Thank you. <laughs> so um, the real question is what we want to answer to uh, is Thor's hammer as big as yours? Um, Captain Hammer just has that little tiny thing, right, on his shirt. That's all he's really got. And Thor's got meow meow. Nathan, I think you're the only one in the galaxy that can actually lift your hammer, right? <laughs> <laughs> only those that are worthy. That's a kind of a inside Thor dirty joke. That didn't come out right at all. I did. Uh, Are you also a I woman actually now? had a sorry. Are you also a woman now? Is that how also this works? Also a woman now. I also uh, I got a I had a part in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. I don't know if you knew this. Has anybody seen Guardians yet? Has anybody here seen Guardians yet? Oh, you can't. We're not famous like you. Is it? It's really funny. It's so it's oh, what, everybody's seen it except it's for great. me? It's a great. Oh, this sucks. I... Oh, just because you're old friends with you'll, Josh. Uh, you'll never know it's Maybe. me. It's a, it's a CGI character. When they talk like this, we come down here like that. That's me. That's me. Wow, good. that was good. That sounds nothing like you. That's how I scare kids. <laughs> Does anyone else have a, a microphone and a question? By the, by the way, guys, I think, I think this is going great. Thanks. See, yeah, it seems like, yeah. Thanks it seems for coming. Like it is, seems like they're okay with it. Yeah, it's yeah. going pretty good. I don't know if they've noticed. Well, see, they, they haven't realized how thin the boundary is between us. They could rush the stage any second. Don't shut up! <laughs> if, they de if they decide to overtake us and run the bases, there'll be little we can do. <laughs> Clearly. So long as they don't get that information. <laughs> we'll be sure uh, to keep who it has the, right, right here, young lady, lovely. Um, okay, so this is not going to be as funny as the hammer question. Um, I was just wondering if a uh, sort of wish list for each of either your current characters or most recent characters that you've played on screen, what would you love for that character to be able to do? Chloe, go! Ah. <laughs> um, well, I play a computer hacker, and um, I don't know if any of you guys watch the show, but... <laughs> Warn me when you're going to do that. Um, it's, it's fun playing a computer hacker, but when you're actually uh, shooting computer hacking, it's not that cool. <laughs> it's a lot of me just... And I actually, I just told Marissa Tantrone and Jed Weed in this, and they're like, what do you type? And I go, Chloe is the best. I type Chloe is the best over and over again. So I'll be like, the GH325 is Chloe. Chloe is the best, Chloe is the best. And I'll be typing and saying that, and usually I mess up my lines, but yeah. Um, anyway, that totally wasn't the question. I would like to maybe do something other than that. Um, you want to change it to, like, Chloe is really good? Yeah, m maybe. Well, my character is becoming a little darker in season two, and she's going to be out in the fields a bit more this year. She's been hanging out with Agent May, so... 
I've been stunt training. I'm not flexing, so I'm just nervous. I'm not. I'm too embarrassed by it. Um, but yeah, so hopefully more of that. I'd like to see you, like, while you're typing, go. Ah. <laughs> Just like in like a really intense uh, moment, like I can do this. I can, I, I can, I can. Ah. <laughs> just, do, just hit that delete key a couple times. That's our blooper reel, by the way. It's all, it's all there. <laughs> Chloe is the rest. <laughs> Could you stop talking for a second? I'm trying to type you. <laughs> Anything that uh, you would would have wished Spartacus could have done? Um, had like a had like a lot of MiG fighter planes to have bombed the Romans. And he could have just been on a mountain and be like, what's up, bitch? Boom. And then, shoo, and it just, and they sail in and they just bomb everything. I don't think MiGs bomb things, just but I, I haven't researched it. The, the technological advancements of warfare. Yeah, and just be like, oh, a horse, what up? so haunted all the time. The guy, was he ever, ever in a good mood? Yeah, like once. Once, I think he'd recently had sex with someone. And he was like, that's okay. <laughs> um, I just wish that guy crack everybody. a smile. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was against the rules. Like, every time I smiled, Woo, they're like, good no, battle, guys. cut, cut, take it, take it again. You smiled. Spartacus isn't happy, ever. God. Uh, Seth. Yes, Nathan. A character you played that you said, here's one thing I never got to do that I wish could have been done. <laughs> do you want to go all the way back to Buffy? Uh, That's I a long way back. I don't have any unsatisfaction related to Buffy. Like, I no. feel, especially at the time that I got to do that, um, I was only playing uh, affable stoners and guys in vans hacking computers. <laughs> what did you type? What did, did you t Chloe is the best. Yeah. <laughs> that's so weird. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's such a... No, here's what's embarrassing. When I, when I did uh, Enemy of the State, I was, like, constantly typing stuff and plus, like, spouting just relentless jargon about satellites and, yeah. you know, digital mapping and coding it's... and things like that. Just things that people don't say unless you do that. <laughs> and I, uh, for all of the shots that were facing this way, I just taped my jargon, like, <laughs> right on the monitor. And then I was like, guys, you're on your 3 o'clock. Make sure you get the West Winds. And, like, whatever. That's a I'm really saying, good idea. So, you can't... You can't do it. I'm totally doing that. You can't do it all the time. But if it's like nonstop, it's you know, jargon. Shakespeare yeah, jargon. Like computer jargon. Yeah. And they're facing you. You could totally just stick it there. Here's a you're Chloe. You're supposed to be reading stuff. Here's a, here's a secret. Put part of it over there, part of it down here, and part of it over there. Oh, yeah. So it doesn't look like you're just reading the That's one exactly, spot. No, I did it on. And you could go to the other spot, and you go to the other spot. That's exactly what I did. If you... Okay, yeah. Then... Take one line, put it in the bottom of a coffee cup, and grab it and go, whew. <laughs> if, you, if you watch Enemy of the State, every time I turn my head to face another monitor, my line has been post-it noted yeah. to that monitor. I do it. I, I have to, uh, Castle has lists all the time, and I go, look, we have, huh, that, this. I have them on the <laughs> ceiling, <laughs> up on the rafters. I have them stuck up there, the key words I can just go for. Alan. Uh, I, the character is Wash. Yeah. Sure. Uh, yeah. The one thing you'd like to do is Wash you didn't get to live. Yeah. I like... I would like to have regenerative healing powers. Just, and it just, like, fills itself in. <laughs> oh, I'm fine! Wait, wait, where's Wash? Over here. I'm hey. good. <laughs> hey, guys. That's good. Yeah. That's, that would be my excellent question. No, uh, she's, she, have you got your hand up? You're not going to steal my microphone, are you? I need this. It's expensive. It comes out of my pay. Okay. All right. Um, I was just wondering. Oh, okay. Sorry. Hi. <laughs> I can really steal it, so. <laughs> Now that, now that gangbang comment's not looking so far off, is it? A Joss Whedon enthusiast was torn apart by celebrities today. All right, 
this question uh, was shield related. Oh. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh no, that, that's okay, that's okay. I'm actually, here, I'm qualified to answer that. <laughs> See that? Woo. New York Comic Con. Yeah. I had this for like an episode and a half. Wait, wait, here's the. You've had it longer than I. Wait, but here's the best part: is that Colson's is right on. Is it really? Oh, nice. But it... So if ever I need to impersonate Colson. Except for he's now Director Colson, not Agent Colson. Oh, that's what fair. a handsome we'll guy. Have to, we'll have to tear this up then. What was your What was your question? Yeah, the question. Uh, I'm sure. Just wondering what you could tell us is coming on next <laughs> season of Shield, and then if Lucy Lawless has been on set yet. Lucy has been on set, and oh, she has. Uh, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. No, it was just really cool because we were at our table read, and uh, sorry. <laughs> it's been a long weekend, guys. We are at table read. And, uh, um, and I just kind of looked to the left, and I was like, oh, there's Mulan and Z the Xena Warrior Princess just sitting next to me. So that was kind of awesome. Um, but uh, yeah, what can I tell you? A lot of nothing. Because it's Marvel. I can tell you, uh, where are the Marvel people? We're rebuilding shields. Uh, I'm not kidding. Marvel is the real life shield. So when I, when I get asked questions, they'll just appear. And they'll just stare you down and not let you answer any information. Um, it's going to be a really good season. We have uh, Hydra has infiltrated Shields, and um, we kind of have to rebuild the whole thing. And Colson is now director, so he's not just overseeing our little team and our little ragtag people on the bus, but he has to now kind of handle everything. And um, yeah, that's all I can <laughs> tell you guys. Thank you. Very nice. Is there another microphone out there somewhere? Over here, lovely. Hi, Joss. My question is actually about Wonder Woman. Uh, okay, how about an intimidating kind of moment with Joss with all of you guys? Can I go? Yeah. That's a good question. <clears throat> um, Joss once uh, said, "Can I talk to you?" We we're filming uh, the pilot of Firefly. Yeah, sure, buddy. And this is my first lead role, my first one-hour drama. I had a lot of stress about. I don't know what I'm doing every day. And uh, so he takes me for a walk on the Fox lot. <sighs> Listen, I thought, uh-oh. Because um, I wanted to be the first person to tell you this so you didn't hear it from somebody else. I went, oh crap, he's gonna tell me like I need acting lessons. I said, um, sometimes these things just don't work out. It's nobody's fault. I went, oh, fart. I'm getting fired. I can't believe this, I'm getting fired. He goes, and uh, we're just, uh, we're just not gonna use Rebecca Gayhart. We had hired Rebecca Gayhart to play Inara, and she, she spent one day, in, and Josh just decided he wanted to go a different direction before we hired Morena. So, right, it was about a five minute conversation, he really dragged it out, and then I find out, we're not gonna go with her, he's gonna go with someone else. Oh my God! <laughs> I can't breathe. <laughs> yeah, fire her. <laughs> I was every nightmare I'd ever had came to fruition right there. God, that's horrible. <laughs> right? I have one. Really? Yeah, I do. I, I was at my test uh, for the role, so when you get really close to getting apart, you test and uh, you go in front of the network and. Uh, I, was, I was about to go in and Joss comes out and I just got really nervous and I had never really talked to him one-on-one -on -one and he's just standing there and I was like, hey. And he's, he's like, hey, how are you? And I was like, I'm good, I'm good. I'm nervous, but it's fine, I'm great, I'm good. And then he goes, yeah, that's, he's like, good. And I said, how are you? He goes, I'm all right. I go, you look like shit. <laughs> I mean, go, I mean, tired. I mean, like, you usually look less tired. <laughs> I don't even 
even know if you'll remember that. I mean fat. I mean ugly. I mean... <laughs> and he was like, I go, I mean, you just look really tired. And he's like, thank you. Thank you. And then like went back into the room and I'm like, I'm the biggest fucking idiot in the whole world. Uh, and somehow I, I got the part. <laughs> You must have forgotten about that. Insult him, and he will hire you. Apparently. I'll tell you. So uh, he let me read uh, his polish of Ed Solomon's X Men draft, and I had read Ed's script already. So when I read the polish, I could really tell exactly what he had changed and added. And I don't know if you guys know anything about that, but that first movie was all pre-mapped out by the time he even was brought in to solve any problems. They had already started building sets and stuff. There were some things they just weren't gonna change. They were like, eh, fix this. And so I read his draft and it was so fucking good and so simple. The little things that he had done, the small ways that he had brought characters together or made a scene feel more important or just added gravity to something where it had felt trite before. And I finished that script and I was like, yeah, this guy's a really, really, he's good at this. He's really good at it. And I was like, oh, man. That was really intimidating. Because <laughs> I felt like, oh, shit, I can't ever bring him an idea that he won't have already considered and either, like, implemented or, you know, decided against. And so I just stopped <laughs> offering anything on set. I was I just did, like, whatever you want, dude, I'll do it. <laughs> that, look, ah, okay. Cool. Bigger? I won't even ask why. I'm sure there's a reason. <laughs> it's like Leonardo da Vinci's pals are going, maybe it should be a little farther to the left. Yeah, but, you know, but you know, actors, and especially, we were a bunch of like early 20s, you know. Nobodies. Well, you know, everybody was Except in, for you, actually. Well, everybody, everybody had done like some version of something, but that, that show was, a, was an opportunity for everybody on a network that barely existed. So... You know, it's really easy for actors to be like, oh, I'm going to do it my way. I don't, I don't know what's right. I think I should do this. <laughs> but they just kept writing me, like, great dialogue and really good situations. But it was that draft because I had really seen the before and after, and I was like, oh, shit. You make it look easy. Alan, if Joss was here right now, what would you say about how he intimidated you? Stop it. Let's let's be friends. Let's don't don't. <laughs> Probably something like that. Did you have an intimidating moment that was? I, I'm intimidated a lot with with Joss, it, but it always comes out of like there's his his brain is bigger than mine, and uh, he has more words and more knowledge, and uh, we'll just be hanging out and we'll get to joking, and you know he'll say a thing and then I'll say a thing. This adds to his thing, and then he'll say a thing, and I'm lost. <laughs> Uh, I know I gotta look a couple of things up before I and I and I have two choices either go <laughs> which he looks right through that and sees that I, I, I just so there's always an intimidating moment where we're having fun right and then I just kind of want to slink away and you look at him with lost eyes and he goes ah he's a composer of 18th century it's yeah yeah, yeah it's, it's funny if you know him it's like that <laughs> if you understood counterpoint when you're right eh, never mind Liam, you actually edited some of Joss's acting. Yeah, that was that was that was in itself rather intimidating. He was on the he was he was on the set of a giant film, and uh, this man was having a party, and because they seemed to care for each other in some way, hmm. um, I, I was in charge of getting everybody that liked Nathan, and there's so many, damn you all, um, to like put together a little sort of happy birthday thing, and so Joss did it. It was quite good. You know, like seven out of ten. You know, I get, you know, he's okay. No way's behind the camera. No, no, he's actually, it was very funny. And, um, and except it didn't quite fit what we were going for. So I had to go, hey, Joss, um, you know, you're on a big film and plenty busy, but if it wouldn't be too much trouble, do it all again. <laughs> he never called back. It was quite intimidating. Oh, so cool. I just, I'm like, you know what? I'll, I'll just make do. I'll just, I'll just, I'll, uh, I'm gonna make it, I'll make it work. And then, and then I was like, oh wait, you're hilarious. 
how, yeah, and all that stuff you said about how he's really good, you're like, there's layers. There's layers. He's like, there's so much to it. It's yeah, we, offensive. We've had him on, we've had him on Robot a bunch of times, and he'll just, he'll just go for it. Like, he doesn't yeah, right? hesitate, he did, exactly. unrestrained. We had him play a zombie version of himself. <laughs> had him walking around saying, Gur, Arg, the whole, this. Oh, <laughs> really? He's game for whatever. He's really funny. Yeah, we did a whole Cabin in the Woods thing, and he came on and let, killed a bunch of people. It was great. Yeah, no, he was, he was singing Happy Birthday as a guy dying on a rock. It was great. I was like, that's, that's new. I haven't got that one yet. It was great. Actually, the most intimidated I've ever been by Joss is on the dance floor. Oh! Uh, wow. Because totally he has moves like I have never... No, like, literally, like, you've never seen any being moved. Moves like Jagger. Ever. And, and he's, he's unyielding, too. Yeah. No, really. <laughs> he, he can do something with his knees that just shouldn't be happening. Uh, Which is, you know, well, I mean, yeah, who knows? That, that's why. Is this where that orgy well, you know, thing comes in? He broke up the group heard thing. Him, heard him yeah, no, I know. Yeah, I know why he's he's not here. Um, <laughs> you... oh, shit. He's behind you. <laughs> dance, dance! <laughs> oh my god, this makes me so happy. Hey, Joss. How are you, Joss? Hi, guys. Aww. I'm we so miss good. You, buddy. I'm super good. I can do this thing with my knee where it it gets it, it doesn't work. <laughs> Swells up and super attractive. We I'm wearing uh, compression tights, <laughs> ladies. <laughs> we were all just talking about moments where we were all incredibly intimidated by you. There were moments when you weren't. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. Fine, then. This is another moment where I'm intimidated by him. This is another one. I just peed. <laughs> We're sorry you couldn't um, be here to uh, no, join I, us, Joss. We hope you don't mind that we took over your panel. Nathan Forrest. Um, I'm enormously grateful to all of you for taking over my panel. Um, I'm very sorry that I'm not there for many reasons. Well, only because of dancing, but um, but also because everybody came out to see the thing, and I love to do the nerd panel. Usually, uh, I don't want to say hungover, um, but uh, um, but uh, this year I am I am a, a pathetic cripple, and um, uh, but it's nice to know that it still takes five people to equal one of me. <laughs> It's nice, it really is like my multiple personalities uh, and I'm so psyched that part of me is a hot chick because I always thought so. Um, and I knew that part of me was King Candy. Yeah. Yes! Have the medication. <laughs> <laughs> I am uh, positive and totally sure that anybody, any, everybody here would like to hear any kind of update whatsoever you could give us on the Avengers Age of Ultron. There's um, a very, uh, it's, I have to keep some of it under wraps, but there's a very exciting subplot about Thor's knee that is, I think, poignant and, and universal, really. Um, we are less than two weeks away from finishing. We have been shooting since before Chloe was born. Um, and, uh, um, I don't know, I think it's really good. Um, did anybody get to see the, pre the little trailer yesterday? It looked like, uh, it looked um, like there was a Hulkbuster in there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
So that's, that's pretty cool. That's for you youngsters. Hulk was exactly after my time, but I knew you had to do it. Okay, now, now say something super cool, really, really nice about me. <laughs> or, or Chloe, either one. Look, I'm a genius, not a god. <laughs> I loved you in Guardians of the Galaxy. Thank it's you. the best you've ever looked. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, what, uh, when, when are we going to see you next? What's your next thing that you can go do that you won't be a cripple for? Um, uh, my, next, my, my biggest nextest thing is not doing anything. I'm very excited by this new project. Uh, I'm going to try to live like a person, uh, you know, see Just, things. In my experience, usually if you have a couple weeks off, you make a movie. With, with me in uh, it. Yeah, you know, I'm... it's like a disease, like a cute little puppy disease. Um, no, I really am not uh, not planning my next thing. It's uh, very liberating. I have to. I still have to make the the movie. And I really just would love to, for the first time in 25 years, not have a job and not have an idea about what I want that job to be. I wish for you, Joss Whedon, unemployment abounds. <laughs> Thank you. From the bottom of my heart. Anybody else want to uh, say anything to Joss? Oh, get well, buddy. Enjoy those meds. You know, here's the thing about the meds. Okay, this is England. And that hasn't, that hasn't really caught on here. The, the upper lips are very stiff. They're not like, here's your Vicodin. They're like, you should probably take an aspirin when the screaming stops. <laughs> <laughs> A little disappointing. I would never have hit my knee with that hammer if I had known there wasn't Vicodin. Does anyone have a quick question for Joss that we can get before? Or does anyone have Vicodin? <laughs> we can mail to England. Hey, Who has it? Uh, Dana, yeah, I'll ask it. Um, so, obviously, I'm not going to ask a question about Dr. Harwell. Obviously. We're going to get the same answer, as we always get. Um, if <laughs> you were to go back and save a character from one of your projects, and you'd have to... <laughs> obviously, not wash. And you, but you'd have to... <laughs> But you'd have to kill off an equally important character. Which one would you pick? Why, obviously not Wash. I, think, I just want to ask that quick... was the most heartbreaking one he could have done in the series. Okay, that's obviously the best one to choose for that. If you could bring back a character at the cost of the life of another character. Wow. Can I just kill Nathan across the board? Just all his characters. Then I could hang out with you, because I wouldn't be unemployed, too. Um, no, you still have to do that show, Castle, that I didn't make. You did that thing that I didn't make. But I'm cool right, with right. it. Um, uh, wow. Okay. I, well, I, could, I could keep Wash and kill Zoe and then make people just as miserable. Um, it doesn't have to be on the same show. Kill Sarah Michelle Geller or something. I did, twice. Um, no, I, yeah, I'd probably, uh, I, I probably, you know, I, I, obviously I would want to unkill Wash, um, but that's because I would want to have, to have had a series that wasn't canceled. Um, uh, either way, as things stand, Tara, um, I had meant to bring back at no cost to any other character whatsoever. Um, but uh, deals didn't work out. Uh, so I guess I'd bring her back in my perfect world. And wash, and wash, and wash. I meant wash. The answer is wash. You get, yeah. <laughs> and kill Sarah Michelle Geller. Cool. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask my question? Oh, please, ask a question. Okay. Hi. 
Thank you for streaming all the way from London, Joss, by the way. Um, I do have a question that I got from Twitter from one of my friends for you. Um, she's left with a serious oh, desperation Twitter. to know how the others are even going to get Steve to pay attention in Age of Ultron because he should be off looking for Buggy. So um, how are they? How <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry. I didn't understand any of that. <laughs> but Why? for some reason, I... How are you going to get... I don't, do I, I don't think... I speak, start again. Okay. I'm, I, I'll do better. What what is the, question? The, qu the question is, how are you going to get Cap interested in fighting Ultron when he should be consumed with finding Bucky? Thank you, Seth. <laughs> um... Thank you. Uh, thank God you're bilingual, Seth. Um, it's true. I speak, I speak nerd fluently. I thought I did, but ever since I came here, things have been a little different. I you sound, you sound more like Madonna is. every day. I'm just plastic. And sadly, I look... Well, anyway, um, it's, it's a compression tights. Um, uh, the fact is, Ultron is a clear and present danger, and Bucky's in the wind. And we do uh, mention the fact that that's his sort of primary thing, but he's also working with the Avengers, too. So um, we're not uh, ignoring it, but, uh, um, but he definitely has to deal with a mad eight-foot robot. Because that's one of those things, you know, you put it off, and it just gets worse. Who's it, Mike? Perfect. So, uh, Nathan, thank you for assembling the Mighty Morphin Whedon Rangers. Thank you, you have, Doctor. You have the giant floating head over the top of the five... And I, I'm a, Let's all form some so words! polished by Liam. <laughs> I'm sorry to give you another idea. It's, um, oh my gosh, I totally just lost my train of thought. Uh, um, Marvel is doing a lot of things right, and it has a lot to do with you. Uh, you can't see me at all, I'm sorry. Um, uh, what, what three things would you say to DC? Like, hey, step it up, step up your game. Oh. I don't think I would, I would say that. Um, I think that, that would be uh, a little presumptuous of me. I think that um, you know both both studios have kind of different agendas, different ways of approaching the superhero genre and the ethos of the thing and the aesthetic. And they go, you know, very dark and serious. And sometimes it works amazingly. Um, and Marvel tends to be a little lighter. Um, both have movies that I adore, and both have movies that I'm like. Meh. Um, uh, including bits of my own. So, uh, you know, I, I think that I would not want them to try to do what Marvel does. I like what they do. When they get it right, um, you know, when you get a Heath Ledger and a Batman Begins and those things that really, like, grip you, there's just, there's, that's something that nobody else is doing, and I like it. I want them to do what they're doing. Nicely done. You didn't make Batman cry. That's nice. Where's the next microphone? Oh, you're over here. Lovely. Hi. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Good, good. That's good. Um, firstly, Joss, thank you for Buffy. I wouldn't have got through high school without it. That was amazing. Um, I recently read Much Ado About Nothing and loved it. I'm a lit student, so I read a lot of Shakespeare. What made you choose that particular play? Um, besides the fact that I love it, uh, it's... Um, very accessible, and it's also, it's all in one location, so I could afford to make it. Um, you know, it's, I, I really did love it for a long time, but I didn't get it. I sort of thought, well, it's charming, it's lovely, oh, the banter, it's wonderful. But I didn't actually, you know, really understand the darkness and sort of how the stories came together, and, and uh, when I did, then I was like, oh, my God. I have to tell this story. This is a chance to really talk about what makes us um, 
understand a, the construct that is romantic love, and also I can make Nathan look stupid. Without even trying. Dude, that was Oscar stupid, I'm just saying. <laughs> Who's got the mic? Over here, lovely. Howdy, wishing you a happy, a speedy, drug-addled recovery, because knee surgery's got to be a bitch. But um, I wanted to ask you a question, because you come from a long family history of screenwriting, and I wondered how your grandfather or father or other family members kind of influenced your screenwriting and everything else, because I find that you go to wonderfully dark places and also wonderfully comedic places in the same episode, even from different shows and different uh, genres that you've worked in. That's a question for Doc. <laughs> um, I would say they influenced me as people uh, more be than uh, most of, mostly as writers, because the shows my father worked on were never as funny as my father. They were never as dark or acerbic or cool. Um, uh, they were fun, but, uh, you know, he was, he was a real wit and so was his father. They were also terrifying. So, so that, uh, that made me the insecure mess that is devolved into five different people that you see before you. Who's got the other microphone? Hey, Joss, Liam McIntyre. Um, <laughs> I have dreams of polishing parts of you. Yeah, you got that. Yes. It's my thing, I'll deal with it. Can you give me any dirt on Jed? <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh. Um, <laughs> just because I know him um, and I really want something. He seems like such a nice, clean-cut guy. Yeah, this is, this is going to go badly. <laughs> um, he, he really actually is a nice, clean-cut guy. I knew it. He's so boring. I can't. Describe it. It's you too. Just, you get that too. Yeah. Yeah. Just, uh, just, just. You just stare into the middle distance and wait till he's done. It's like you are, he's just kind and fun and and talented and loathsome. Exactly what he seems. Sorry. So that's all right. It's okay. But the other microphone Chloe's is. seen it. She's seen the light on the dark side. Puts me to sleep every day. Uh, it's like so. Thank God. Hey guys. Uh, Josh, thanks for coming out from London. Uh, Marvel-related question. Uh, yesterday they announced uh, Guardians 2 before Guardians even came out. Um, how much does that decision affect what you've been trying to do from an Avengers perspective? I mean, that couldn't have been planned too far ahead, uh, an announcement like that. Does that really affect anything, or was it really planned, or anything of that nature? Um, I was not aware of what they were going to announce, um, but because uh, uh, I sort of stay away from everything else as much as I can while I'm trying desperately to finish the Avengers. We're two weeks away from finishing, and I'm two days away from actually finishing the script as well, so it's, there's a lot going on with me right now. Um, uh, it's awkward for me. They, Kevin has a big plan, and every now and then he'll tell me part of it if he thinks it's going to affect what I'm doing or if he thinks what I'm doing is going to affect it. Um, but... Uh, as much as possible, I try to live in my bubble. Um, Guardians is very much its own thing. They're not the Guardians of this galaxy. It's a different one. So I can sort of keep them at arm's length uh, long enough to do my thing, and then I'm sure everything is going to get mixed together because it's Marvel. But, dude, but I, I don't think I can stress student. enough how good Guardians is. It's so good. It's really fun. Yeah. Did really good they, they they might have huge balls <laughs> i i haven't seen them in person so i but the movie's really good i think we have time for one more question for joss before we get out of here please tender uh, hi guys hi. Uh, as a girl who grew up watching buffy and other of your projects uh what do you think is so hard to other directors other writer, writers to write really good uh female characters Because they're dumb. <laughs> they suffer from what we in the business call stupidity. Um, I have no idea. I don't, I can't, I've never fathomed the mind of the person who isn't interested in all grown-ups. 
So I really don't, uh, I don't, I don't have an answer. It's like, I have a lot of insight into serial killers and insane robots. Um, but misogyny is something that just seems weird and useless. But I also think there are a lot of people out there who are getting it done and, uh, and were before me. And, um, you know, uh, the fact that you can list them or you used to be able to is a bad thing. But I think more and more uh, it's, you know, the culture is shifting. Not enough, not fast enough, but it is. Very nice. Joss. It's, um, anybody who's ever had any kind of surgery knows you can't be very comfortable right now. Thank you very much for sitting up straight. Thank you for combing your hair and getting onto your computer. <laughs> Thank you for spending some time with us uh, when obviously you are uh, largely unavailable, still making yourself available. We really, really appreciate it. Lots of love, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, I cannot say enough about all of you who came out, especially these five mooks. You're the five finest moves I know. I really appreciate your swinging for me. Thanks, Puppet I Master. Hope to see you soon. <laughs> Thank you, Joss. <laughs> Thank you very much, Liam McIntyre. Thank you, Chloe, <laughs> Seth, Allen. Thank you guys very, very much. We're going to go outside. We're going to do some more of those uh, Smiles for Smiles photos. Shekinah, I cannot read your lips. No, the card. Oh, we're going to give away. We're going to give away. We're going to give away the Intel Core i7 Extreme processor giveaway. Section 130. That's you guys. Row two. Where's row two? Seat number 25. That's, that's 24. There's no 25. There's no 25. No. Is empty. I'm gonna give what? It's empty. This is yours. Thank you guys very much again. Alan, Seth, Chloe, and Liam. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, you guys. First of all, Intel winner, just so you know, you're going to go see Joel.